This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, we continue to look at the breaking news from France. Agence France Press is reporting two people died after a gunman took five people hostage at a kosher grocery store. The gunman is reportedly the same man who shot a Paris policewoman dead on Thursday. Meanwhile, French police have surrounded a building in a northern town near Charles de Gaulle Airport as part of a massive manhunt for the two men accused of carrying out the massacre at the Charlie Hebdo magazine. Police say the suspects, Saeed and Sharif Kawachi, are holed up in a small printing business where they have taken a hostage. Uh, still with us uh, in London is Gilbert Ashkar. Also with us here in New York is Mohamed El Hawa. He is a graduate student in international relations at the Paris Institute for Political Science. He grew up at the outskirts of Paris, where he was involved with different grassroots associations, including Salam, a student association dedicated to promoting interfaith dialogue and a better understanding of Islam. Um, before we go back to Gilbert Ashkar, uh, Mohamed, talk about the climate in Paris. Paris, and you hear the horror right now. You've got the two brothers. They're holed up near the airport. They've got a hostage. Another man, not clear what their connection is, if there's a direct connection, though they may have been years ago together, um, is as killed two hostages, or two hostages have been killed in a Jewish supermarket in Paris. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a political nightmare for, uh, for the entire French society, but particularly for the French Muslims because those who uh, kill those individuals really uh, 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 create a space, create a great opportunity for the most destructive Islamophobic racist forces in France, which are already using this uh, tragedy, this catastrophe, to uh, justify uh, uh, more repression against the, uh, the Muslims. So it's a, it's a political suicide that they basically uh, did in the name of Islam. And again, uh, the, the condemnation has been really clear. Uh, this go against the really foundation of, 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 of Islam. And, uh, but I think we have also to be clear on this. Uh, uh, we should not uh, always expect Muslims to condemn as Muslims. I think they should condemn as French citizens or as human beings. Uh, when, uh, as uh, Gilbert Ashkar mentioned, uh, uh, this Norwegian uh, individual, uh, Breivich, killed uh, those uh, 77 individuals in, in, in Norway. Uh, he was not portrayed as a Christian, white Christian uh, uh, individual. He was uh, not even uh, portrayed as a terrorist. So it seems like uh, when a Muslim uh, commit uh, a terrorist act, he is referred as a terrorist. But when uh, a non-Muslim does the same, there was a double standard. And it reminded me that I was watching NBC, and there was a, a, a former CIA official who uh, was on the show, and he said that the, uh, this terrorist attack was the, uh, uh, the most uh, uh, the most serious one in, in France since uh, um, uh, uh, since uh, f uh, the in Europe since the killing of of, of this Norwegian uh, individual by Breivik, <laughs> but he forgot that. Um, Actually, it's not the case, uh, uh, because uh, he didn't include the, the killing of the Norwegian people uh, as if uh, this individual was not a terrorist. Uh, uh, so there is a kind of identity politics here, which is a bit uh, uh, disturbing for me. Hmm. And, and this whole issue of the, uh, for now, for 30, 40 years, uh, uh, the uneasy situation of the Muslim, the growing Muslim population within France vis-à-vis -vis the, uh, the old established uh, French uh, white citizenry. Uh, what do you see? I mean, clearly this is a setback for those relations, but what has been uh, the relationship now over the last uh, uh, several decades? Well, uh, as you may know, France has the largest Muslim uh, population in Western Europe, and the uh, history of the Muslim presence in France is deeply connected with the history of French colonialism. Most of the Muslims come from the countries which have been colonized by France, namely uh, North African and West uh, African Where is countries. your family originally from? Uh, from Morocco and Algeria. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, to understand the uh, treatment of the French Muslims in today's French society, we need to look at uh, the colonial legacy, which I believe continues to shape influence the way France deals with Islam and, and Muslims. Um, 
Uh, Jaber Ashkar, can you comment on what Mohammed yes. is saying? I mean, I, I, I think, uh, well, uh, I agree with what he's saying. Uh, until now, I can't see any disagreement. I, I mean, he, he is uh, uh, exactly pointing to the, 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 this problem of uh, the, the, the double standard in reacting to such uh, events when, when they come from, uh, uh, from Muslims nowadays uh, compared to any other religion. Because, uh, after all, this wave of extremism and fundamental is affecting uh, everywhere, you know. Uh, I mean, you, you, we mentioned this uh, Norwegian crazy guy, and you have these appalling demonstrations of the far right in Germany, of all places. That's really frightening. Uh, you had, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, Jewish uh, fundamentalist extremists in Israel uh, uh, killing uh, uh, regularly, actually, and uh, no one is saying Judaism is the source of, of, of all these killings. You have uh, Hindu. Uh, uh, fundamentalists doing all sorts of appalling things. And again, uh, no one is saying this is the, the, the problem of Hinduism. But when it comes to Islam, Islam is finger pointed immediately. And that's, that's really here uh, uh, an issue of, uh, of double standard in, in dealing with, uh, with that. And uh, again, I mean, the, 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 the freedom of speech is something, and I'm, I'm fully for the real freedom of speech, actually, which from is not a real country of freedom of speech, where, there, where you have a lot of laws hindering the, 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 the real freedom of speech in France. It's not, uh, nothing like the First Amendment in the United States. Uh, uh, but uh, even in these uh, uh, limitations to the freedom of speech, you, you find uh, uh, double standards also. And as I said, I mean, uh, for instance, France, uh, of course, the, 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 the sense of guilt for very good reason, which is actually an awful historical reason. Uh, about uh, the, the Jewish genocide uh, uh, is not uh, equaled by any sense of guilt uh, with regard to the, the, the colonial uh, past of France. And Algeria, for instance, is one of the most appalling episodes in the history of colonialism. Uh, um, you know, it, I mean, uh, there are few worse cases, like the, the, the Congo, uh, with the, 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 the Belgian in the Congo uh, and such. But the, 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 the the history of a French presence in Algeria, which lasted until 1962, that's not that long ago, you know, uh, uh, is it, just appalling. And it, there is no, no uh, uh, real, uh, uh, I mean, at the, at the level of, of the whole French society and the French media, this is not really integrated. And the, 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 you have this kind of, uh, of secularist uh, arrogance and uh, to, towards uh, Islam, which is a continuation of the kind of arrogance and colonial spirit that existed at the time of, of direct colonialism. I'm going to just interrupt to say breaking news. Um, the police are, have named two suspects wanted in connection with the second siege at the kosher supermarket in Paris, Amadi Koulibaly and Hayat Boumedien. Hayat is a woman. I want to turn to an imam of a mosque located in a Paris suburb, Drancy Mosque. Imam Hussein Shalgoumi said France's Muslim community fears a backlash in the wake of the Charlie Hebdo attack. We are also afraid of this twisting. That's not to say we do not do our duty in renouncing this barbarism. No, we renounce it. We are one of the first victims. I am living 24 hours a day under police protection, facing with a minority. Unfortunately, all the Muslim world are victims of 95 percent of terrorism. Currently, the acts of yesterday, there is also a wave of racism and insults that follow on the networks and on the Internet. We can understand the anger, but we cannot accept the hatred. That's Imam Hassan Chalhoumi um, uh, of the Drancy Mosque in Paris, um, the French Muslim community fearing a major backlash in the wake of the Charlie Hebdo attack. In fact, the policeman uh, that has become famous now, who is laying on the ground outside the offices of Charlie Hebdo, um, named uh, Ahmed uh, Marabet. Uh, 
was Muslim himself when uh, one of the two assassins came and shot him directly and killed him. And people are not only saying, Je suis Charlie now, but they are saying, Je suis Ahmed. On Sunday, there'll be a mass protest in uh, France, a rally in Paris. But they will not have the National Party, which is Marie Le Pen's party. Um, if you could comment on this, Mohammed, and the organizing among the youth, people like you, groups like Endigen. Yeah. I would like to say a word about this uh, hashtag, Je suis Charlie. Uh, I really understand the uh, compassion, the natural compassion and respect and sentiment uh, which this slogan represents. And, uh, um, but uh, I think, uh, uh, Charlie, we need also to uh, 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 mention that Charlie Hebdo's uh, role in uh, fostering this Islamophobic context has been very, very controversial. And especially since the early 2000s, they uh, somehow uh, 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 recuperate, uh, they use some of this rhetoric of the clash of civilization and they apply it to the, uh, to the Muslim who, who, who were always portrayed in the most degrading ways. So we are very clear on the condemnation of this attack, which which are not, which cannot be justified in any way, shape or forms. But we also, as citizens, should be entitled to uh, criticize the content of the, of the newspaper and the uh, uh, shift in its uh, editorial line uh, since the early 2000s. I'd like to ask you about that, because the way it's been portrayed here, at least in the United States, is that the magazine was an equal opportunity satirist, uh, attacking yeah. Christian, uh, the Christian religion, the Judaism, as well as Islam. But you, you think that that's not quite so? No, I think when you target, you know, the weakest of the weak, uh, 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 when you target a, a population, a segment of the French population, which is already the target of institutionalized racism, uh, 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 this is not brave. I don't think it's courageous. Again, they have the right to do it, and it's the law. So nobody put into question the right to do so. But uh, we should be also, uh, without, without being, you know, afraid of being linked to this attack, uh, uh, question the responsibility of, of the newspaper uh, and question their ethics in that matter. The organizing of young people, um, like the groups Indigene, uh, Indigenous, um, how people have been organizing in the past. Uh, you know, the indigenous uh, uh, party, the, the party of the indigenous people uh, of the Republic, as it is called, the Parti des Indigenes de la République. Uh, has uh, emerged in a very specific context that, uh, which what uh, Gilbert Ashkar mentioned, the 2005 uh, uh, propositions uh, of law, which would you know make uh, obligatory for the French educational system to emphasize on the positive role of colonization. This law has not been passed, uh, uh, and also the 2005 riots, which have been, uh, which are ex a very uh, interesting case to understand the way Islam is dealt and perceived in France. Uh, in the post-9-11 context. So uh, this is the context uh, under which the, this movement, which is now a political party, has emerged. Uh, uh, this, uh, basically, the, the idea of this uh, uh, movement is to say that, well, France is uh, uh, denied its colonial past. It uh, refused to deal with it. It refused to uh, recognize how this colonial legacy continues to shape its uh, relation with Muslim and Islam. And uh, uh, I believe uh, they, uh, they, ha they make a point in, 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 in this in this understanding, in this analysis of French society, which is a, a very racialized society, which uh, pretends to be colorblind, which is really hunted by, uh, by its uh, uh, colonial uh, uh, past. We're going to have to leave it there, but of course we'll continue to follow this issue. Mohamed Akhawa is a graduate student in international relations at the Paris Institute for Political Science, grew up in the outskirts of Paris, where he's been involved with different grassroots associations, including Salam, a student association dedicated to promoting interfaith dialogue and a better understanding of Islam. He heads back to Paris soon. And Jaber Ashkar, thanks so much for being with us, professor at the School of Oriental and African Studies, or SOAS, at the University of London. His most recent books are Marxism, Orientalism, Cosmopolitanism, as well as The People Want, a Radical Exploration of the Arab Uprising. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, a bomb attack in Colorado Springs. Was it a terrorist attack against the NAACP? Stay with us.